The facelift upgrades of the Mercedes E-Class now also count for the most powerful models. Here today we have for you the Mercedes E63, or in this case the very E63S. So join us for a full review. Exterior, interior and the performance driving experience of the Mercedes AMG E63S. Enjoy everything together with us in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front, the Mercedes E-Class received different new front grills and the same also counts here for the AMG models. This Panamericana grill, they call it Mercedes, has you know, the wider part in the lower area and is smaller in the top area here than with the vertical fins and it's bigger than before and also here this Mercedes star is bigger than before and the air intakes here also bigger so overall a very very strong look, even stronger than before. Here with an additional carbon fiber lip, you can get different stylings for that too. You can also see one of the characteristic elements is that this hood is cut in. So everything of that hood is on the inside and they have this outside frame around. This is also one of the sporty features of the E63. The length remains at 4 meters 92, 16 foot 1 or 194 inches. Side profile hasn't been touched that much. Interesting that we have the design dropping line at the height of the door handles. To me that's always the nice integration here when it just forms one line. Then you see how light and shadow is being played with. Here there's also this carbon fiber package. That means we have the carbon fiber spoiler in the lower area and also carbon fiber covers right here for the mirrors, side mirrors, but you can also, for example, get it in all black or so, depending on what you like. For the AMG model here, either 19 or 20 inch, the 63S automatically comes with these 20 inch wheels, different stylings are available. Here I also knew that there are aerodynamic designs, you can see here this aerodynamic design, and indeed it's a little bit more efficient, but yeah, if that really makes a massive difference, I don't know. And then optional also carbon fiber ceramic brakes here with these contrasting brake calipers. V8 bi-turbo sign here, this is yeah, screaming out so to speak. 4Matic Plus means that the all-wheel drive, which is always rear-wheel biased here with the E-Class, is more variable than ever actually. That means it's the 4Matic Plus system. And then the classic sedan styling here for the E-Class sedan. Of course also the 63 is available still as the Estate model the T-Model, as we say in Germany. In the rear, the E-Class facelift has indeed changed a lot. There's a new boot lip right here because the headlamps have been reorganized and are horizontally drawn. Before that was only for the coupe and the convertible and so it looks sleeker than before. Critics also say it looks more like a blown up or bigger A-Class sedan now. You can argue like that, yes, but definitely looks sportier and sleeker than before with new these new lamps here. And they're also more modern as for the interior design right there. And the E63 gets an additional spoiler right here. And usually I'm not a fan of these additional spoilers, but here for this model I think it works quite well. Especially then in combination with the new design right here. Lower part then, big diffuser. Here also again with the carbon fiber package, which is an option. And... <laughs> this is clearly a fake exhaust, so case for the auto fuel fake exhaust police. Yes, the air goes through, so some then say then it's not a fake exhaust, but to me, I mean, 
take a deep look at it and i think yeah these are just beauty tips definitely if that's really necessary for such a vehicle hmm, yeah i'll leave that up to you and i know you always like to see the turning indicators here in the front first no cascading form but yeah i don't need it and you see this is the part where also the daytime running light is usually and here now since the face only one stripe and then two dots so c-class e-class s-class will be differentiated not anymore by these one two three stripes they all get one stripe but then one two or three led dots so this is then the design differentiation between these classes and here we go with the turning indicator in the rear what do you think and in contrast here to the sedan we also have today just the first glimpse of the estate for you the 63 estate with a matte blue color special here to the amg model so of course here with the continuing roof line and here you can also see the comparison you have the, the chrome frames around the windows and you can get both you can get it like this or then with the black pack in black both for estate or sedan just matter of preference and here also with bright wheels also 20 inch of course for the 63s model and you can also have the same wheels then for the sedan the question is which one would you go for here the estate or the sedan at least if you have the choice in your market of course the estate is not available on every market this one here will be the more typical 63 model under the hood we have a 4 liter v8 bi-turbo for the 63 amg models either 571 horsepower for the 63 or 612 horsepower for the 63s and then also 850 newton meters of torque 3.5 or 3.4 seconds is the acceleration figure then depending on the model you have to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour rear wheel biased all-wheel drive but again with 4 medic plus with more variable distribution and this one no mild hybrid technology and here also with a separate batch one guy this one dominic built this engine so this is one man one engine concept at the 63 amg models and the 53 amg model would come basically a stock engine then modified and is a inline six cylinder so these two cylinders that's the difference than 53 and the 63 model here with the e-class acceleration difference is actually just one second Key here with the AMG badge also at the rear part and slim light feels premium like it closing or opening with keyless entry and the door closing sound yeah that's solid outlook will proof inside of the doors we have here carbon fiber decor elements in general for the e-class you can pick different ones Burmester sound system here in the E-Class, really sophisticated and different trims available for that. Then reasonable door pockets also for bigger things, AMG entry badge and also AMG floor mats. And biggest news is new steering wheel. So the new E-Class either in the base version gets like, um, you know, a different styling here where are these new buttons and the AMG steering wheel as we see here for the AMG models, of course also for the AMG line has this split here like the elements are like one two one two like there so sportier design but these are now all capacitive buttons and they are less friendly to use than before it looks cool it looks clean but the real buttons before were easier to use and soon we'll also show you that here we have new dials as well for you know driving modes and so on and the whole steaming reform is also different but the form itself is actually quite cool a good size round and here also with the microfiber touches that's really cool better grip not only while racing but also in everyday driving life then the seats usually both for e53 and e63 amg you would start with normal sport seats and these here are these super sport seats you see they are even more you know formed here at the shoulder part and they are way slimmer and stiffer and i can really tell you do not pick these there might be rare exceptions where they are more comfortable but for 90 percent of all people these will be less comfortable so they are stiffer they are slimmer the normal sport seats just stick with the normal sport seat they will be more comfortable than these and one thing is also that the e53 
is usually with here this like Dynamica microfiber on the inside and leatherette on the outside. So an animal free seat and really sporty and also breathable in summer and warm in winter. For the 63, no matter if you go for this one or for the base sport seat, you always have a animal skin share, which of course doesn't make sense for racing or sporty purposes, not for sustainability, not for animal friendliness and so on and so on. So this would indeed for me also be you know, reason to stick with the E53. Of course, you also save a lot of money when doing that. Here now, again, yeah, I think it's really strange that they even offer this seat because it's really so uncomfortable. I can just stress that. I don't understand. And all, they always equip the, uh, the test vehicles with that. At least I would just put the normal sports seat in there. Um, but here, I would not buy the car as it stands here right now because I couldn't imagine going in this vehicle with these seats like for three hours or something. Um, I can just state my experience here. It might not be true for everyone, but I can just say what I experience here. Good control here of the steering wheel. That's nice. Up and down and in and out. And again, the you know the visual part of the new steering wheel. And then also here the you know the, the grips here with the microphone. This is actually really cool. New shifting pedals here also. Also for down and up and they also give you a, a nice haptic feedback. So that's cool so far. Soon we'll power up everything and then we talk more about what is happening here with these gauges of course the seat control is always at the inside part there like this and well as for headroom there can be a panoramic roof in here if you don't have one with the 1 minute 86 or 6 with 1 <laughs> leaves you enough headroom but even with the panoramic roof it would not be no problem for tall people to sit here interior overview classic e-class styling is that we have this overlapping dash in the top part here and everything you know, wrapped tightly then the carbon fiber deco element in this case and also here for the amg models we get the middle console here in carbon fiber that looks pretty fancy with an amg badge here once again with the design here with these round air vents right there in the lower part we still have a manual climate unit so it's also easy to control it while driving like that. also a hotkey for example to access the gps that's always very important to me you know in the reach of the driver part then open it here and you have the usb-c connection now for your smartphone it's also an inductive charging pad adaptive cup holders then there's this touchpad where you can also control the infotainment screen for example also while driving this is the evil exhaust button boom 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 yeah <laughs> so of course it automatically comes alive when you for example go to the sports plus mode that's also possible and then also suspension settings and so on and then we have this split opening here for this armrest that's always a nice feature here we go and then some more usb supplies here and they all switched it now to usb c and yeah reasonable space here definitely underneath no, do you look at this new steering wheel once again? It has a very good handle and grip, and it's really thick here. So, um, yeah, I really love handling that. Really cool. And also, the visual part is just amazing, definitely. But then, here, the capacitive buttons here, you have these touchpads. Okay, there were before. Here, right thumb to control the right infotainment screen, go back or to the home menu. And, you know, it does give you some kind of feedback. So, there's this one area that can be touched. Um, and also pressed in so if you compare it to the volkswagen ag solution this one here is the better one gives you a better haptical feedback and then here for louder and you know less um, volume and so on it's somewhat okay but again the solution before was better so i don't i rather think it's a step backward and on the other side you use your left thumb which is now my right index finger at the moment <laughs> because the microphone um here for controlling the left infotainment screen or the instrument screen but it's soon going to show you more of that and here is everything with the cruise control and then for the amg model here especially these additional gauges like we know from porsche for example and we've seen it in some amg models before here for switching the drive mode um like this sport mode and so on and you can also click here for the individual mode so and the left one looks also like a round dial but it's not um instead here for example you can activate the exhaust node and here the suspension settings the amg models here come always with the adaptive air suspension and therefore also the stiffness of the suspension is being changed right here and then here you can also switch it through when you press inside here then you can switch what you want to control here for example having the exhaust on the lower part 
also. Now the infotainment system you can control with the lower touchpad, you can control at the steering wheel or you control it with touch right here now with the MBOX and there are special AMG performance gauges for the 63 models. For example, you can see the, you know, the all-wheel drive distribution then, for example, or the G-forces and so on. So everything of that is possible. Um, yeah, just playing around here, the G-force meter. Engine also, yeah, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, consumption, this, um, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah, these about the special gauges, also track pace app available, GPS looks like this, and um, this is actually a good visualization, still not the newest one, but still does a good job, no problem with that. And here you can, for example, go to the car settings right here, then activate a head display or so on, or deactivate it. And one good example for the MBUX is also, you know, natural voice input. Hey, Mercedes! Activate head-up display. The head-up display is switched on. So, and now it's back switched on. And of course, you can use it very well for voice input. It's one of the best voice recognition systems at the moment. Yeah, the Pulsar 2 with the native Google integration. That one is still better. But then I think this one would come after that. And the Apple CarPlay is always a hotkey in the top part then when you have access to it. Um, Android Auto is also available. And, um, yeah, let's listen to this Burmese sound system, which is, again, really, really cool. Has a nice 3D surround sound. To me, at the moment, one of the best systems on the market. And next to the big MBUX update, it's also a rear view camera update, great resolution. This drone, fake drone view from above here as well, but also you can see the camera actually pens right and left but it doesn't do it physically it's just that the image is more wide angle but not used totally and then you know the image is shifted but still a nice feature here for the new facelift left side of the display here or this display panel here with special amg gauges and when jonas revs it up now because he's at the driver's seat at the moment yay way to go boom boom <laughs> so, and you can switch it around here, of course, what you want to see, have in your line of sight, basically, and you can also go for different stuff, you can have the trip meter here, you can also have the GPS information in here, for example, and also with a, um, with a map display, that would also be possible. There we go. That looks weird, right? But you can also have it all the way full screen, that looks better than, of course, better to use while navigating. But you could also switch back to totally different gauges if you don't fancy these AMG gauges, gauges here, Super Sport. You can also go for normal sport gauges, for example. Um, they look like this then, for example. Yeah, why not? Um, so you're pretty flexible or you can even go with very classic dials. And the head-up display is always a good option. Here, for example, there's also a sporty head-up display style available where you, once again, can see the refs going. Now to the rear compartment, guys. Yeah, we always enjoy our shootings as well. I hope you do so too. Then also the same styling for the rear. In this case, yellow console scissors, but you can also get different, you know, stylings and colors, of course. Question is how much space do we still have? Because even if it's a sporty vehicle, we still want to have some legroom and that might be the only advantage of these super sport seats that they have even a little bit more legroom because they are so slim but uh, to put your feet underneath um, you need to put them a little bit higher this comes very close but definitely enough legroom and even if you have the sedan only with my height it's no problem also for the headroom that works very well and yeah the seating position here in the rear is actually quite decent so uh, no complaints about that outsides here with isofix cover then you can also just fold this middle part here as a ski hatch that's possible and cup holders next to the cubby hole here they are like this oh okay that's what did i do there we go yeah that's live and authentic on autographer 
<laughs> and last but not least, this middle tunnel here. Yeah, this unit is quite large, of course. Then you have two USB-C chargers here now in the face lift and a separate climate unit. Now let's open this new boot lip. Yeah, <laughs> that works quite well. Also, easy access here for a sedan, of course, more flexible than with the T-Model, the Estate. Underneath you have, for example, another foldable shop shopping basket. Um, yeah, sometimes you forget it and then maybe you have one. And when I put the backpack inside, there's no problem. Here I do release the seats, but then you have to push them from the rear compartment. I already did that with one, uh, yeah, one third of that. Ski hatch again is possible or of course fold all the way through. So yeah, still very well usable. And one remarkable thing is when you close it here again, first of all, child safety test. Yeah, that's totally, you know, you know absolutely fine, very sensitive. But then the strange thing is when it closes, it's like, bam, just listen to that. Bang. <laughs> And a short interior comparison here to the T model, the Estate. And of course, this is the clear advantage if you compare it to the sedan. Nice that this cover here raises up automatically and here very square dimensions. This makes it more everyday driving life suitable. Below here, again, similar as with the sedan, but of course, loading in and out is so much easier. And of course, going right through in here. And then you can also have this folding function right here and there we go for the maximum setup. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge and yeah, why not start it in one of the sportier modes and then you immediately feel that this car is ready to attack at any time out of the roundabout, really good control of the steering wheel, very nice, and here Slavon feeling, natural feeling of that steering, that's pretty cool, and the new grip here on the steering wheel with the, you know, very thick grip, and also sick grip, <laughs> definitely, that's actually very cool, so to control it, that's very nice, I think that's a step forward. Just, you know, like controlling with the capacitive buttons here while driving, especially, that is like, you always get like, whoa, I don't want to do this, you know? So, um, yeah, this, this is to me really, you know, a, a hassle to do that while driving. But, you know, controlling the steering wheel itself, that is actually pretty cool. Not sure if you can see it from that angle, but there's also the augmented reality function for the GPS. So it gives me the camera screen, the front camera, together with then a sign of where to go next. So this is really helpful. It's not yet augmented reality in the head display, but at least on the screen there. But the head display itself is also very helpful. And in the Sports Plus mode, of course, we have the best acceleration, and we can always show you one acceleration here from, yeah, we can actually go 0 to 217. There's no, nothing here. Let's see. Plop, that was already, yeah, almost 90, so I have to reduce the speed immediately now. And that was the race start in the Sports Plus mode. Hit the brakes, hit the throttle, and here we go. Wow. Awesome performance. Really good distribution also from the all-wheel drive, so we don't leave any rubber on the ground. And once again, when you're driving this car at 70 kilometers an hour, it feels like nothing. It almost feels like standing still, you know. When you reach higher speeds, then you would feel that this car is actually driving. And so, yeah, speed is really underwhelming then at any time. Good control. The air suspension still gives you some comfort. So we also can go to the comfort mode. Then the adaptive air suspension also switches to the comfortable mode. It still feels sporty. They have adapted the air suspension in this phase. They've even changed some hardware parts, even for the normal air, air suspension for the E-Class. However, the span here also has become wider between comfort and sportiness. And also with AMG models and with Mercedes in general, a based E-Class has a very, very soft air suspension. The air suspension here for the AMG model is tuned on a stiff trim, so you hardly feel anymore that it's air suspension. But still, it gives you a decent comfort, but already in the, in the comfort mode, it's quite stiff. But I think still a good compromise, and here again, the steering feels very good. It's not the most progressive steering, but that's an also like, you know, easier going straight. And for example, Sport or Sport Plus mode, then 
suspension is stiffer and then you really lose comfort when there are some you know, um, bumps on the road and so on. But I think it's still a compromise where you can, you know, where you can live with, especially in the comfort mode. And as I said, this variety of this um, comfort span has become larger, so you can also adjust it then to your needs. Noise insulation, also once again very good with the E-Class, one kilometers or 60 miles an hour and hardly have to raise my voice, hardly hear any wind noise and so on. Here in the 63 model you still feel more connected to the road and so on, um, tire-wise, wheel-wise with the big wheels um, and of course and also with the stiffer suspension setup, but you can still live with that definitely. Um, the thing I told you that in the interior part that reduces the comfort most are these bucket seats or half bucket seats. The normal sport seats indeed will do much better. And especially when you also have the dynamic car service, which you can get in the 53 mode, then that gives you even more softer seating comfort. The 63 model, of course, is all about the performance. The 63 S model, honestly, it's more about spending even more money because the acceleration difference is not that huge then between 63 and 63 S. It's more about like saying, I have the top model, you know, that's more about it and yeah, just a little bit more money. Here, when you're already at speed, like 60 kilometers to 100. Blub, and that's it. And wow, there's so much you know, pressure going on there. And you're just gone. And also, again, a nice V8 sound. Due to recent particle filter updates, especially for the European vehicles, of course, the sound is somewhat reduced. But I think you still have this sporty punch you you want to feel when driving this vehicle. So to me with the facelift here, I think we gained some comfort suspension wise. And again, this you know, from comfort to sporty, this, um, this difference, this is what they have worked on. And of course the different steering feeling. And again, the user interface is worse than before. The steering feeling here from the form is better than before. So yeah always comes at the catch. Interesting also when we accelerate out the corner here. Really stable, so even in the Sports Plus mode, of course when it's dry road, when it's wet, you should not use the Sports Plus mode in public road. Maximum the Sport mode. Yeah, I mean, after all, it's all-wheel drive, definitely. You can also put this car to a rear-wheel drive only mode. This is also possible. That would be rather than for the track use, for example. So, um, yeah. But yeah, this is, for example, also a race mode. We would not use in public roads. This would be, you know, even more enhancing everything and the stability systems and so on. So, oh, no, here we go. And the next motorway part. Yeah. So, if you miss an intersection, <laughs> just accelerate it out and you're on the way once again. So, Going on the motorway right here then now. And again, nice corner. Yeah, and I mean, you just have some of these corners and you already feel like driving this car on the racetrack. What a good handling. And you see, when a normal vehicle like a taxi or so is driving at normal speed, you feel like, are they standing still or what, what am I doing here, you know? And I wasn't even going that fast. So now to the motorway. German Autobahn, welcome, and let's go. That was already 170 kilometers an hour, so easily reached, so it's like nothing really. Just goes on and on and on. Yeah, this is definitely a great performance from this 4-liter V8. And here also on the motorway, even at this speed here, 140 kilometers an hour, once again, you hardly feel anything, noise insulation wise, stability wise, all good. I mean, what the, what's hell? Look at that, it's like, what is this? That's 250 kilometers an hour now, and I feel like I'm still standing still almost. It's like really, again, like nothing. Wow. Look at that stability this car has. It is incredible. And I usually never go these speeds because at some point, when with most cars, even sporty vehicles, you reach 200 kilometers now, you say like, yeah, that's really fast now, and 
that's enough, you know, that's enough for now. But here, like, it just goes and goes and goes. And here at 200 kilometers an hour, or 125 miles an hour, it feels like, okay, now we're relaxing and just cruising. I mean, there's hardly any other vehicle that conveys you the feeling of you're cruising with 200 kilometers or 125. I, I'm really wondering, like, is this tachometer bogus? That's what you want, and it's not, you know, it's really not. We're going that fast. Yeah, it's really great. There's hardly any other vehicle that changes your conception of speed in this way, you know, and this, of course, because it gives you such a stability, such confidence while driving, then the great noise insulation, which is one of the best in the industry overall. So, once again, super super impressive what this car is able to do but I also have to say you can have the very same experience also with the E53 yes it's a little bit less powerful like a second slower in the acceleration figure but you save a lot of money so when you're watching this review maybe be fascinated about the E63 but my hot tip would definitely be going for the 53 a little bit less horsepower still same driving fun definitely way less money and also the more comfortable and also you know the the dynamic seat you can get for the 53 so that would be my hot bargain for the day it's still an expensive vehicle yes definitely but you know when we present you these top sporty versions we also try to you know give you a good advice always and yeah i think this is really something about about this vehicle hardly any other car does it in that way to combine sportiness and comfort Super sport seat and being aside now, like talking about the um, noise insulation and so on, and also the suspension and so on. Well, and when you're off the motorway, you really have to pay attention that you don't go too fast because you're used again to this enormous speed that once again you have to def do to adapt to that, you know. So, um, this can be really dangerous at times. Now, if check out, we don't, yeah, let's clear away. Wow. So having a lot of fun with that one and I really enjoy cars that combine sportiness and comfort. That's really cool. And I mean, this is not a pure sports car like an AMG GT or something. And you can use this in your everyday driving life, you know, as normal as, as anything else when you buy a normal E-Class sedan. And that's, I think, something that is really, really cool that you have basically two cars in one as for that. And when you're a little bit bored, yeah, go some slaloming, then you can have fun. Or go to the comfort mode, and you can also use the upgraded assistance systems. We have it here activated at the steering wheel, and they have been upgraded also that, you know, we have traffic sign recognition. You also have new function that adapts in traffic, for example, that um, the car is moving to one side of the road. As for that here, I did not intervene. It was the car braking itself. Now the car is accelerating itself once again. Adaptive cruise control is doing a good job. There's also a blind spot monitor that then shows like a small warning triangle right there. Um, so you have everything you might need. And I think once again, what a good all round and how, well, like, what a powerful vehicle that really totally changed your conception of what speed means. Now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes AMG E63 S here in this facelifted version. In general, the E-Class facelift introduced new fronts and also for the sporty models, even stronger, even sportier appearance. So especially the sedan with this new front and the new rear really rather looks like an all new vehicle. Also the rear way sleeker than before. So indeed, definitely a sportier look, especially for the 63 model and also the same counts for the 53 model. Interior changes more about the infotainment than everything digitalized now, even if you start with the smaller screen and the MUX with touchscreen and also with the natural voice input, that's definitely a big step forward. Really good you know, to use it. Also decent space you have in the interior, of course, as for this segment and a good build quality as well. 
Only thing missing in the 63 models are animal skin alternatives. That's where the 53 is better with the Dynamica Artico mix as a standard seat. That would also be one reason to go for the 53 and of course to save some money. The performance is also there with the 53, so the 53 is definitely the best, you know, or better price performance as for the AMG models here. It's just that you get two cylinders less. And here the V8, of course, is yeah, a master on the road. In driving experience, here with the upgrades, it's, you know, becoming quite obvious that the span between comfort and sportiness is even wider than before. And so far, even in the comfort mode, a 63 model was really you no know, you had a, you had a, you know no compromise you went all the way on the sporty side and it was not that comfortable suspension wise even though you know have an air suspension but here now with the facelifted model definitely more comfort especially in the comfort mode without losing sportiness at the other uh, side of um, of you know of the sporty end so that's i think a very important upgrade here because they also worked you know even changed hardware parts with this adaptive air suspension Definitely not an air suspension carpet ride as you have with a normal E-Class, but that's also why you get an AMG. And, well, I mean, especially the Autobahn experience here, it's so incredible. You're driving 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. I think, like, that's a relaxing speed. So, um, you know, should I make some coffee or something <laughs> while doing that? That's, you know, with probably with no other car that is so relaxed to drive at the high speed and you hardly feel the speed so you really have to check it that you don't exceed the speed limits really dangerous with this vehicle so a very impressive um, you know impressive experience especially when you're going that fast so thank you so much for tuning in today also tune in to other e-class episodes we have for you we also have the more normal ones if you maybe you know fancy watching this but end up buying a more normal E-Class. So see you there, or maybe also at some competitor models. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.